a tremendous victory for freedom, and a smackdown of the homosexual activist agenda. I'm Matt Barber, Vice President of Liberty Council Action. Joining me again today in studio is Ron Miller, Associate Dean with Liberty University's Helms School of Government. Well, our friends at One News Now are reporting that the Sixth Circuit has ruled in favor in a very high-profile and and heavily watched case in favor of a Christian graduate student named Julia Ward, who almost three years ago was expelled from a university counseling program for her religious beliefs. In a strongly worded opinion, the Sixth United States Circuit Court of Appeals reversed a district court decision in favor of Eastern Michigan University, sending it back for trial along with this message, quote, A reasonable jury could conclude that Ward's professors ejected her from the counseling program because of hostility toward her speech and her faith. As part of her counseling practicum course in early 2009, Ward had been assigned a potential client who was a self-described homosexual and was seeking affirmation of that sexual orientation. Because Ward was unwilling to violate her own religious convictions in the context of the counseling relationship, she was permitted to refer, as is the policy, the client to another counselor but was told to remain in the counseling program, she would have to undergo a remediation uh, a program that would help her, quote, see the error of her ways. And, you know, off, off uh, air earlier today, Ron, you and I were talking about how with the left, tolerance is a, is a one-way street, uh, and, and their version of intolerance will not be tolerated. This is a perfect example of how uh, it is our way or the highway if you do not have a right to believe this. And if you do believe this, we're going to take away your ability to even make a living. You know what's amazing about this is that one of the epithets that's thrown at um, people on the right, people who believe in uh, the founding principles, is Nazi. And, yeah. and, you know, it's one of those things that just shuts down conversation. Yet when you read that they actually want to take someone and put them in remediation so they can see the error of their ways, I I, I have to admit these images came up in my mind of some of the more uh, totalitarian and authoritarian regimes in our history who did not allow people to think a certain way and would put them in um, re-education so that they yeah yeah that's <laughs> yeah uh, remediation was is a softer word uh, yeah. reeducation is what we're talking about here absolutely and and the left the secular socialist uh, mindset is to go into the schools indoctrinate certainly children and and this at the at the graduate level uh, indoctrinate um, students and if they don't fall in line with their postmodern sexual anarchist worldview that says anything goes, if it feels good, do it. And if you have a client that comes to you and wants you to affirm their uh, uh, demonstrably destructive and uh, uh, heretofore uh, uh, recognized as immoral behavior, uh, you had better affirm that behavior because under our postmodern secular humanist worldview, there is no right and wrong. All morality is relative. So if you don't adopt our worldview and if you don't abandon your sincerely held Christian beliefs, then you are going to be expelled from the program. This is absolutely uh, astounding. And what's even more astounding is that the left lined up in support of Eastern Michigan University. They said, absolutely, they're doing the right thing. This woman should be shut down. She should not be able to ever be a counselor. She should. It's, it's uncanny how uncivil the discourse has become, as you point out. And they're threatening her livelihood. They're threatening her ability to make a living uh, when she, if she has a family. They're threatening her ability to care for her family. Uh, I read recently where um, a climate change organization is mounting a campaign to launch against all weathermen who don't subscribe to their agenda. Yeah. It's going to somehow make sure that they lose their jobs. Their political agenda, right. couched in the, the rubric of science and the, the language of science. So, I mean, they're going after people's livelihoods. They're going after people's professions. Um, I'm sure that Miss Ward's calling is to counseling because it, it's something that God placed in her. And to think that she can't exercise that in this environment 
Um, I mean, thank God we have other alternatives out there where she can be affirmed. But it just points to the fact that academic freedom is um, a non-existent uh, non-existent state. Well, generally speaking, this this tactic that we're talking about here, it, it's right out of Saul Alinsky's Rules for Radicals. You identify the individual, you you marginalize them, you attack them, you name call, you you discredit them, you marginalize and, and push them to, uh, to the fringes, even though they take a mainstream approach, which Julia World, Ward here actually adopts a worldview that the, the majority of the world embraces to this day. Billions of people still recognize homosexual behavior as uh, aberrant, disordered sexual behavior, uh, as I think is supported by every major world religion, thousands of years of history and uncompromising human biology. But when we're dealing with the left, they don't they, they don't let the, the facts and the science uh, and the truth get in the way of their uh, uh, rebellion against God and their um, radical postmodern agenda. And if anybody gets in the way of that agenda, as, as I've often pointed out, uh, as High Feldblum has said, this is Barack Obama's EEOC uh, uh, appointment, recess appointment to the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. She was a radical lesbian activist at uh, Georgetown, I believe, and, and she has said this is a zero-sum game. That means somebody wins, somebody loses – well, the left views people like Julia Ward as a casualty of war. They, she needs to be trampled, destroyed. And again, as we've talked about earlier this week, this sets an example so that others who might be in a counseling program similarly situated somewhere else around the country might recall in the back of their mind, ooh, what, well, here's what happened to that girl. I think I'll keep my, my sincerely held Christian beliefs to myself, and I'll play the game along with uh, these radical leftists. And the sad thing about it, it's causing a lot of people of faith – to withdraw from the public square. Uh, they're actually uh, doing exactly what the left wants them to do, because the left would like nothing better than to see us behind the walls of our churches and our home groups and other things where we get to practice our faith in an environment that's safe and secure, but we're not putting it out there for people to uh, attack. And they're fine with that. As long as, you know, you can go, they say you can go and have, what do they call it, freedom of worship, Anytime yes, you hear yes. freedom of worship versus freedom of religion, let the alarm bells ring in your head because what they're saying is you're allowed to do these things in the privacy of your own home, but don't in, don't come out into the public square. Well, that's exactly right. The left has has expressly said, if if generally I've heard it over and again, if you enter the stream of commerce, for instance, if you're a Christian bed and breakfast. And you open up, and, and, and it's central. I mean, Christianity is, is all around, and you are a Christian family, and, you're, and you open your doors so that people can, can come in and stay in your bed and breakfast. You, you cannot require that marry, only married couples are allowed. You cannot uh, put it, say, I'm sorry, our, our values, our belief system does not, would not permit uh, a, a homosexual couple to come in and here and share a, a room. Uh, we believe that that is sin, and we are not going to facilitate sin, therefore, uh, uh, lest we be sinning ourselves, uh, why don't you go down to, there's another very nice bed and breakfast down the street. No, 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 that is not enough. You, If you're going to enter the stream of commerce or any other public sphere, you had better adopt their position, their worldview, or you will be crushed. And that's the sad thing about this case with Miss Ward. She did exactly what she should have done. She referred this person to someone who may be willing to affirm their lifestyle. She didn't sit there and use it as an opportunity to try and, and browbeat the person or, or, or abuse she, she them. She did exactly that. Said you'll, you, you can go down to the other counselor down the street who can accommodate you. You know, this is uh, going to be played out with Obamacare and some of these uh, religious uh, exemptions and other issues that yes. are being challenged. You know, we're going to see this uh, balloon in the next uh, several months. And we're going to be hitting on that uh, later this week as well. Well, the court ruled, quote, a university cannot compel a student to alter or violate her belief system based on a phantom policy as the price for obtaining a degree. Strong language in a, a strong war for our culture. Uh, Julia, Julia Ward is uh, a hero for taking a stand, and we're very pleased to see the Sixth Circuit step in in her defense uh, and it, it, bolster and support her right to express her religious beliefs openly and without reservation. Go to lc.org to learn how Liberty Council 
is standing in the gap in defense of people whose religious liberties are being trampled. LC.org or give us a call 800-671-1776. You have-